So, we are back again with yet another video. This time, it's going to be about lenses and perspectives. What is perspective? Let me put that into a perspective. The literal meaning of perspective means point of view. But in photography, it means understanding or interpreting your subject's height, width, depth in relation to the distance between, say, another object in your frame. So you need to have something to relate to in your frame in order to understand the depth, height, width, uh, distance, etc. Human beings see things in three dimensions. So for us, it's easy to, you know, look at a situation and understand uh, the height, width, depth, distance, etc. Whereas when that three-dimensional vision that you have is translated into a two-dimensional space, which is in which the, a camera works, it becomes a little tricky. Plus, unlike our eye, we have many lenses to work with. That's because unlike the human eye, each lens, that is a wide angle, um, a standard range and a tele lens, because of its angle of its coverage and the optics, sees and it behaves differently. Very unlike previous videos, in this video we're going to use a different technique to demonstrate our point. We're going to shoot the whole sequence using a DSLR, a full frame DSLR that is, a Nikon D850. And we're going to shoot a full frame 4K. Which means a still frame grab from this video will be equivalent to a still image shot with the same camera using the same lens. So, over to the setup. So since perspective needs a reference point to explain, obviously I cannot do this uh, demonstration alone, for which I will require the help of one more person. Well, in our studio, we have an in-house model, which is who's our favorite model, and I'm going to take his help in this uh, demonstration. So Alex, would you like to come over? And that's your point, okay? We're going to do this demonstration using five different lenses. So we're going to be using a 14 mm, a 28, a 50, a 100 and a 200. So the 14 mm please. That's a 14 mm. Okay. So you can see the difference. There's a huge difference between what we were shooting all this while and this particular lens. 14 mm probably is the widest lens which is used most commonly. Okay, there are wider lenses available, but in most practical cases, 14mm is the widest. Um, one more thing, Alex and me is of same height. The distance between me and the camera is going to remain the same. The light is going to be the same, even the aperture in which we're going to shoot this, the whole demonstration across the lens is going to be the same. I think it is F4 that you're, going to, you're working with F4, right Alex? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's an F4 that we're working with. So this distance is going to be the same, um, the light is same, aperture is the same, and I'm going to ask Alex to walk back to that wall behind us. Okay, Alex, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so walk back please. And you can see what difference is going to, what different, the kind of difference it's making to the image. Now, Alex, who was of my height, same height as now, so small right behind me, okay? And I'm going to show you what will happen to my hand when I stretch it out close to the lens, the farthest my hand can reach. And let me take my hand to the back, okay? So my left hand is suddenly become very small again. This is probably, or this is due to the way a 14 mm behaves. It tends to distort the image. It tends to give you an exaggerated, point of view. So to the next lens, the 28 mm. And this is the 28 mm. As you know, 28, double of 14. Um, the angle of uh, view is much smaller compared to the 14 mm. Uh, but like I said, the remaining parameters are same, including the distance from uh, the camera to me, who's the subject today. So you can instantly see Alex is much uh, bigger. Alex is now much bigger than he was in the 14 mm. Now, similarly, my hand stretched out, but it's not as distorted as it was on the 14 mm. Okay, the left hand is not that small as it was in the 14 mm. And now the 50. Now, here is when you actually start seeing great differences. 
the angle of view has changed. Uh, now, you know, you started moving in technically, you, you know, you start magnifying the image um, and you see Alex behind me is now bigger in size. Well, nothing has changed except the lens. Okay. And now this is my hand. Okay. You will notice one more thing at F4, which is our operating aperture, the other lenses were giving much deeper depth uh, of our field. Now here, my hand is out of focus and even Alex is out of focus. And one more thing, you, you got an illusion that the distance between us are, is reducing and in reality, nothing has changed. You started noticing my expressions much more clearly. Uh, whatever I do is now being translated or transferred to you much more effectively compared to the previous two shots. We will move to the 100 mm now. This is the 100 mm. Well, still, Alex is now, you know, it, it's seemingly very close to me. Also, Alex has really gone out of focus, almost unrecognizable now. And that's exactly what happens to my, is happening to my hand too. Um, you know that it's my hand, but it's completely out of focus. And I am within a wafer thin uh, depth of field uh, uh, of F4 for 100 mm. I wonder what is going to happen at uh, 200 mm. Let's take a look at it. 200 mm. The result is obvious. Um, Alex who is behind me more out of focus. You can't recognize him. So is my hand. You know that there is something moving in front of my face. But yes, it is my hand. I am working with wafer thin depth of field. If I breathe, I go out of focus. If I breathe, I go out of focus and I come back and stay in my focus. That's the risk that you will have to take when you work with lenses like this with uh, almost full open aperture. In this case, an F4. Over to the next setup now, which is our computer. Well, I don't need to really talk. These images are talking to you. Uh, this is a screen grab uh, from the film, okay? So what you will effectively see is a little crop from top and bottom due to the 16 to 9 aspect ratio of the film. Uh, a still image will have more top and bottom, not by the side. So your angle of coverage will not reduce at all, okay? It's, it's a full frame grab. This is our 14, our 28, 50, 100, and the 200. The effect is really, really apparent. Besides these characteristics, there are two things I'd like to emphasize. I would say one thing rather. Besides creating these visual effects, what do they actually convey to you as a visual? If you want to exaggerate a point, these wide angles help you. In a, in a movie, for example, when your hero makes a grand entry and if you want to make him appear larger than life, you use a wide angle and shoot him from, you know, a lower angle, you feel like, you know, he is much bigger than actually he is. Uh, somebody is making a point there and he is kind of talking to you. Uh, well, you know, the wide angle lensing will really help. This is very natural, uh, very neutral, doesn't say anything much. When it comes to the 100 and the 200, your angle of view has reduced considerably, thereby you start isolating unwanted things all around you. And now your focus is on the person or your subject and the subject alone. And F4, the working aperture, is now offering only a wafer thin depth of field Thereby, it, your eye, your face start talking. The emotions get intensified. So while the first set of images exaggerates a point, the, towards the end, the 100 and the 200 start giving you a sense of intense emotion. What we urge you is to pick up your camera, your lenses, go out, shoot, and uh, figure it out for yourself. Probably you will end up learning more each time you shoot. There is nothing that can uh, replace practice. Hope you like this video. 
Hope uh, you've been checking out our other videos too. If you haven't, please check them out and let us know what you think about them. Like it if you like it. Subscribe our channel and share it with your, with your friends. Uh, we would like to, as usual, hear from you because that's the only way we're going to learn how what you think about us. Hope to come back here with another interesting video for you. Bye for now.